Hello, friends, and welcome to the Mark Rick Show, brought to you by Williamson Automotive. Joe Zagacki alongside Don Bailey Jr. This week, the University of Miami at home. They'll take on North Carolina on Thursday night at 8 o'clock. Hurricanes are going to be wearing black in that game. Let's uh, go back to this past weekend where the Hurricanes gave FIU a black and blue bruising. It was, it was a great game for Miami, and I think we need to spend a little bit of time on the defense. What Manny Diaz has put together uh, this season, you know, he lost, uh, lost some big-time players, especially at the defensive tackle spot. It's just been amazing. It's tackle for loss, tackle for loss, tackle for loss every time you call a play. And what they, they, what they were able to do and how they squashed FIU offensively was beyond what I thought was going to be accomplished. Hurricanes leading the nation in total defense. Yeah, it's no surprise, Joe, because of the way they were chasing the football. The defensive front is doing an outstanding job. The linebackers are, are doing what they're supposed to do. And we have to remember, this has been, what was it, been uh, six quarters without Jaquan Johnson. That's a lot of football without supposedly your best football player. All right, the headline maker in the game on Saturday against FIU was Nicozy Perry. Coach Rick said, we're going to make the, have the birds fly. Well, he sure did fly. Yeah, he did. And what's nice is that we've seen Nicosi Perry evolve. You and I saw him the first day that he got here in camp and, and what happened to him last year and where he was in the whole process. And then now you see what's going on. People don't remember, he came in at about 165 pounds. I don't know physically if he was even capable of hanging in there for a full college season as a true freshman. So fortunately, he was able to get redshirted. He got better in the spring and then the competition has always been there. And when he got on the field, he looked very, very comfortable. And it was nice to see how he was groomed to this point also, right? He got in some good reps against Savannah State, played basically uh, a half or so against Toledo. And then, for the most part, uh, at least three quarters of this game, and, and he never looked out of place. Coach Rick will talk more about his plans for Nicozy Perry and the quarterback situation coming up. But... Uh, he threw some brilliant passes. Yeah, all of them. That, that's what's nice is you see w with his arm talent that he can do anything. There's not a throw that he can't make. He has touch. He has zip. He can throw a straight line. He, 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 made, an, he made everything look easy. And then when things break down, he has the, the ability to run. And he is fast and he's quick. And there, there is a difference. I mean, he's got that top end speed, but I saw him a couple times avoid pressure and duck out of some things, and then he settles down and makes a throw. Miami 31, FIU 17. Let's take a look at the highlights brought to you by Williamson Automotive. Welcome everybody inside the Mark Rick Show. Joe Zagacki alongside Don Bailey Jr. Our show brought to you by Williamson Automotive along with University of Miami head coach Mark Rick and the Hurricanes coming off a dominating performance against FIU coach. I think at one point they had uh, maybe one yard in the game but that was a wire to wire victory and dominating for three and a half quarters. Yeah three and a half quarters is about right. We uh, <clears throat> played this lights out defense as you mentioned and and really made some good things happen offensively. Got 31 points on the board. 
And then, uh, you know, that at that 10 minute mark, we, on defense, I know we made some substitutions and let a lot, let a guy, a lot of guys play. And, and we had a mistake where two guys blitzed and one guy was supposed to stay back and they caught a, a, a little fade down the sideline for a touchdown and got seven on the board. And then, you know, we got some of our young guys in offense too, and we're going to try to work on our what we call four-minute offense. We're going to slow the game down and eat up all the clock, milk the clock, and all that kind of stuff. And usually, quite frankly, we do that with our all of our number one units, so they're used to knowing how to do it. And and so we were kind of sloppy there, and then we have a, a play where we're going to throw a bubble, and the running back was lined up a little too close to the quarterback, and the ball was snapped a little bit here, and the old perfect storm. and. The ball gets knocked out of Weldon's hand, and really, to his credit, uh, in making the tackle was uh, about the, all he could do. The ball bounced between his legs; he couldn't get to it, and and he made a nice tackle to keep it from being a touchdown, and then a, for a field goal. And then at the end of that onside kick, you couldn't kick it any better than that, that kid kicked it. And Cager's right there, six-five guy, good hands, and the ball was just so high. Uh, he couldn't quite get a good grip on it, and they they get that one score again, and and uh, I mean to their credit, you know they they kept fighting to the very end, and uh, you know I mean they're they're an extremely well coached team, and and they got a lot of fight and heart, you know, and when you look at it, that old Dominion game, they they they're down <laughs> seventeen nothing, not so bad now, right? They're down seventeen nothing, old Dominion, and they come roaring back and win that game. You know, and then you saw what Old Dominion did. They, they, Old Dominion can't do what they did without being a really quality football team. And uh, so, um, you know, Coach Coach Davis did a good job of keeping his guys fighting to the very end. And but you know, but before that moment, we our our first couple of units did played well. Coach, let's go to Jeff Jeff Thomas. We need to find out where where he is. He started right. off with a bang, and then yeah, uh, yeah kickoff return. A, bubble screen and then a punt return for you know 80 yards or so which he probably ran about 120 yards but um, and then he just he gave out a gas be, be honest with you I mean thankfully that's all it was um, you know we thought it might have been a hamstring issue but I think it was I think his hamstring was cramping a little bit and he just he just got um, behind the eight ball when it comes to um, the hydration part not that we don't hydrate and don't feed him right but you know, some guys eat better than others and hydrate better than others when you're not watching them. And he probably didn't do a good job of that. And then it was a super hot day. And he exerted unbelievably uh, in that very short amount of time early in the game. And it got it got him. I was thinking he, once he saw the flag, he said, you know what? I'm <laughs> not. <laughs> That's not what happened. But um, spectacular run. We still got credit for like 30-some yards on that return. But, I mean, that would have been 80 We'd probably lead the nation right now. I think we're like fourth or fifth in the country in punt return, and a lot of it has to do with who's returning the punt. Um, obviously, the headline maker was uh, the move to Nicosi, and we could probably spend the whole show talking about uh, that situation. But let me push it forward this way and include some other guys in it. You had Nicosi comes in. Bolware has been getting in there. Yeah. Some other guys have been pushing for yes. playing time. But as we go in a short week, how excited are you and the coaching staff to see how everybody responds now to the competition. Well, um, you, you made the point. You, you look at um, just uh, Nicosi's situation, Cade Weldon's situation, Benzel Bowler's situation, DJ Scaife. You know, they're all f relatively young players in the program. Bowler is a graduate transfer, but he's brand new, you know. So what happens is when Guys may be starting and playing well uh, and do nothing wrong, but the, another guy is growing and getting better and has got a good talent base too and is earning the right to play. And, you know, Bo Venzel Bower has earned the right to play. He's been working at the guard, both guard positions. Scaife now, you know, has earned the right to play, and he's pushing Navon. He's pushing Tyree St. Louis, a senior lineman, you know. Well, these quarterbacks... Uh, I'll be honest with you, it started a little bit slow on the maturity level uh, when we're talking about Weldon and Nicosi. And I'm talking about, I'm going back to last year as, as, as true freshmen. Uh, they really were not ready to push for playing time because they just, um, they were doing the football part okay. You know, they were kind of learning, but it was just, 
just the whole thing, you know, the being a responsible human being and doing the things you're supposed to do when you're supposed to do them and having a trust factor that we're like, hey, I'm not going to put you in there in a position of leadership until you prove you could be a leader. And uh, so those guys have been growing all this time. And now, you know, I said it uh, a week or two ago that, you know, these guys are ready to fly. They're, they're, we're not going to learn much more about them until we get them in the game. And so, you know, going to the last game, I wasn't sure really what I was going to do till the night before the game. And I said, third series, I'm going to put Nikosi in and just see what happens. I don't know what's going to happen in the first two series. I don't know what's going to happen once he gets in there. I just, I just decided to play it out and see what happens. And, and um, he, he started hot. I mean, he played well. And so we did, I just kept him in there. All right, it's Carolina on Thursday night, an 8 o'clock kickoff at Hard Rock Stadium. We'll talk about the Tar Heels and ACC play as we continue on the Mark Rick Show right after this. Happy to welcome you back to the Mark Rick Show, brought to you by Williamson Automotive, Joe Zagacki and Don Bailey Jr., Miami and North Carolina, Thursday night at Hard Rock Stadium. A lot of different things to talk about with this game, but let's start with you. you had a night game in the stadium. We know what that atmosphere right. could be like. Yeah, night game. I <clears throat> had a couple of night games last year that were a lot of fun. One of them was against Virginia Tech where we wore all black and we're breaking out the black uniforms again. They practiced actually yesterday with uh, the black helmets and they got kind of fired up about that. But uh, it, it'll look good. Uh, and that, for whatever reason... We go all black. It brings a lot of energy to our players just to put the uniform on, and and uh, you know I know the fans will be there to, to greet us, and uh, can't imagine how great it could be. I guess I can because we saw it, what it could be like, you know, last year and um, with Virginia Tech and Notre Dame. But we need that kind of support again. We need that kind of energy, and like I told the players, once they're in the stands, let's give them something to cheer about. Coach, what's it mean to have the home field advantage? And as you w said, we had it a couple times last year. We have it every week, but yeah, I mean, we where the fans just jump on the opponent and, and it yeah, makes a difference. Well, it's huge. I mean, it, it just accentuates everything good that happens and really accentuates everything bad that happens for them too. And it can get in your head. And crowd noise certainly can cause people to jump off sides. It can cause people to have delay a game. You know, just one delay a game in a game might be first and 15 and they get to you know a fourth and two and got a punt and would have made the first down if it weren't for that one penalty and all of a sudden that one once that one series changes the whole game so but um it, it just there's something about it i mean it, it truly adds adrenaline and energy to the players and i mean if the stands were empty it, it really wouldn't be nearly as much fun and, uh, but when you had, you had crowd and you had excitement and you had the cane walk in the beginning and the band and the student section and all that stuff, it, it makes a big difference. Uh, Carolina, a worthy opponent, three really good running backs, a talented wide receiving core and a defensive line that now they're getting everybody back. They've had all these rolling suspensions, <laughs> but uh, their defense uh yeah. been pretty sophisticated as well yeah they're very good they gave us all we could handle last year we we hit some big plays if you remember you know Hernan down the middle for a big one and jeff thomas caught a big post and uh you know we kind of big played them as far as uh how we moved the ball and, and got points really um but the rest of the day was a battle and uh so we've got to do a better job of running the ball we got to do a better job of getting third down conversions and, and keeping drives going and uh, you know just and put points on the board you know if our defense gets a point differential and can really start pinning their ears back if a team has to throw the ball it's going to be a good day for us but we got to get them in that spot. Uh, your secondary you played without your general last week Jaquan Johnson uh, looked like Amari Carter did well and Redwine had the big interception where do you think you'll be going into this game? Yeah, you know, on a short week, I'm not sure if Jaquan will make it or not. Um, you know, we'd like for him to make it. We're not sure. Um, but he is, not only is he, you know, a leader and a guy that gets everybody lined up right and all that kind of thing, he's just he's about the best tackler I've, I've seen in a while. Um, if something spits out of there, he's going to get him on the ground. You know, if a mistake's made somewhere, you know, he's going he's gonna to tackle those cats and uh, so he's not there, but the other guys are getting really good experience. And I mean, shoot, it's it's conference time, man. It's it's the road 
to the championship has begun for us. The preseason's over, and uh, you know, hopefully he'll be there. But we're not going to put him out there sooner than he should be. Well, you mentioned it's uh, championship time. We're going to wave the green flag Thursday night, so uh, we'll be ready to go. ACC play, Carolina. Yep. The best of luck. Thank you. All right, that's University of Miami head coach Mark Rick, and we'll continue right after this. Welcome back to the Mark Rick Show, brought to you by Williamson Automotive. Joe Zagacki and Don Bailey. Hurricanes take on North Carolina on Thursday night at 8 o'clock. This is going to be the beginning of conference play. North Carolina will come into the game 1-2. and two. Already won one game in the conference. They beat Pittsburgh last week. Uh, they had a lot of adversity. They lost the game to a hurricane. They lost players uh, due to NCAA suspension. But they've always been a thorn in Miami's side, especially at Hard Rock Stadium. Well, the last loss Miami had during the regular season at home was to North Carolina. So uh, you're right. They've, they've been hard on Miami on the road. They've been hard on them at home. And But in reality, the thing that has to be focused on is this is the conference. This is about the coastal. This is about making sure that you take care of your business. You, you learned a lot the first month of the season, but now it's pure business. You could, This is where you control your your own destiny, and you have a team in North Carolina in 15, I guess they won 11 games. So they're not so far off of when they were at their peak. It's a uh, three-headed monster for them in the backfield. Uh, so they're going to try to run the football. Larry Fedora has always been a up-tempo, spread the field, hunt for the big play, but he's found himself a couple of pretty good running backs. Well, he knows that that makes it easier on his quarterback and knows that he's able to protect the football, but I don't think that he will get away from his roots too much. If he has the opportunity to run 85 or 95 plays, he would like to do that. We also have to remember for the first part of the year, as you brought it before, that they had a bunch of suspensions. So how do you how do you practice and how do you play when you lose half of a class, so to speak? And it's gonna be an interesting game. They've always played Miami tough. Their defensive front has always been impressive. You know, I think that really started back with Butch Davis was there and, and he went out and recruited some big timers. And you look at what they do, they present problems to everybody. John Papuchius is the defensive coordinator. He was the defensive coordinator at Nebraska for Bo Pelini. Miami did face him at Nebraska. He's been on the North Carolina staff, though, for several years. He was a co-coordinator with uh, Gene Chizik. And you mentioned their defensive line last year gave Miami fits. It's kind of a 4-3 or 4-2-5 defense, and he can really trick it up a little bit. And if Coach Rick goes with Nicosi, it seems like he's going down that path, it's going to be a challenge. It's going to be a very big challenge for Nicosi or whoever is that quarterback. Well, the thing that I remember most of all is they do a great job clogging up the throwing lanes. Whether if the defensive line can't get to the quarterback, they're all long enough and tall enough to where they can clog up the lane with their hands. They're going to, they're going to knock down the ball. They're going to make life miserable for you. And none of them are undersized. I mean, they are all top-notch guys. And you go through the media guide and you see a four-star here, the best guy from the state here, a three-star that has developed into something after four or five years. So the program that they've put in place at North Carolina tends to benefit this defensive front because it's something that's a staple for them. All right, for Don Bailey Jr. and University of Miami head coach Mark Rick, I'm Joe Zagacki. We'll see you next time right here on the Mark Rick Show.